It's alive at five. Hallelujah. And we give God all the praise, the glory, and the honor, for He alone is worthy. Hallelujah. And we say thank you to the Lord that He is here. Amen. It's important that we understand that the Lord says, I'll never leave nor forsake you. He is the faithful one. Hallelujah. So let's stand together there in your home, come into the living room, and let us enjoy this time of praise and worship and glory unto the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We honor you, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will be glad and we will rejoice in it, Lord God. I thank you that you watch over us. You watch over your word to perform it in our lives. And I thank you, Father, that, Lord, that you, the, the joy of the Lord is our strength. As we go into this time of praise and worship, Lord, let us enjoy this time. Let us sing as unto you, Lord God. Lord, it's all about you, Lord God. And we want to just worship you. We want to praise you. We want to thank you for your goodness. Take over the service right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord God. Amen and amen. Let's go for it, Lorna. us to come into agreement for brother Greg. Greg's in the ICU and he's needing a touch from the Lord. Greg had a, um, a bit of a mild heart attack and he's needing a touch from God right now. So let's just come into agreement. Let's just believe God together. Father, we pray for Greg right now. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you send your word touch Greg right now. Raise him up from that uh, ICU bed right now. Thank you, Father God, that by your stripes he is healed. We come against any heart attacks. We come against any attack upon his body. And I thank you, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, Greg is healed in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you for this now. Because, Lord God, we know, Lord God, that you are no longer dead. You are alive. Lord, because you rose, you raise us up and heal our bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.
before you right now who's needing a touch Lord she's not feeling well and I pray Lord God that you reach down and touch her body thank you Lord for the Mbutle Lord God also that you just touch her shoulder heal her body I pray for Megan Lord God we thank you Father God healing is springing forth even over Nikki right now thank you Lord God there's nothing impossible with you Lord God you have the power to heal now and we claim that healing in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Lord God, the grace to forgive. I believe God is doing a miracle even now in Greg's body. I believe God is doing a miracle in each one that we have mentioned. I believe that he's here now, that God is here now by his Holy Spirit, touching and healing. Hallelujah. He's standing in our midst. Hallelujah. Here with the power to heal now and the grace to forgive. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God we serve.
for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this service. Thank you for your presence in our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, Rababa Shele de Beata Rababota Rabahita Rababata. Father God, I pray for the anointing upon the word this evening. I pray, Lord God, as your word is shared, I pray, Lord God, let us not be seen, but Christ in us, the hope of glory. Lord, take a coal from the altar and anoint Lorna's lips to speak your word with power and with authority, I pray. And I thank you, Lord God, that lives will be changed and impacted, I pray, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you, Lorna. God bless. Praise the Lord. What a privilege to be alive. Hallelujah. The air in our lungs and the breath that we have, let us breathe in the word of God and let us breathe out words of faith and words of power and words of authority. Father God, I come before you this afternoon in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, I submit myself under the mighty hand of God. I, I humble myself under the mighty hand of God. I'm humbled to be in your presence. I'm humbled to be able to even speak your, from your holy words, your holy book. And Father God, I resist the devil and I tell him to flee in the mighty name of Jesus. We take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. And I pray that the word of God would be like an arrow that would pierce deep into our souls and change our lives forever in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's kings and priests gave a loud, great amen. Hallelujah. God is going to fight for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a scripture this afternoon. And when I read it, I want you just to consider for a moment that it was written by the hand of Paul while he was in prison, while he was chained, while the rats were chewing at his his toes probably and not being able to chase them away while he was in chains while he was in stocks and while he was in chains the enemy tried to silence him with vicious plots and schemes but not even the chains that the devil tries to tie on you can hold you back when you have been set free in your spirit and made free in Jesus Christ Paul was not silenced by the cruel attacks of dark forces, and neither should we be. And the verses that he wrote in his chains were found in Ephesians 6, where he talks about putting on the full armor of God to stand against the attacks of the enemy. And we know the full armor of God, the helmet of salvation and the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the shoes shod with the gospel of peace, the sword of the spirit and the shield of faith. And as he goes through these things, he comes to a point where he reaches verse 18 and 19 and he says, I pray also, pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, may I be mouth words may be given me so that i will boldly make known the mysteries of the gospel for which i am an ambassador in chains pray that i may proclaim it fiercely I pray that you would be an ambassador in chains and the situation or the mountain that you may be facing, you may be feeling like you are in a prison, maybe not quite like Paul, bound with actual chains, but the circumstance that you find yourself in, you might be feeling like it's weighing on you very heavily this afternoon. It may be a financial burden. It may be a health issue, whatever it is. Those chains are going to be broken in the name of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 8 and verse 5, we're going to read a story. So I thank you for turning along in your Bible with me. And I pray that your Bible will be well used and well worn. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 12. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is laying at home, paralyzed and in dreadful torment. And Jesus said to him, I will come and I will heal him. 
And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And I say to another one, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. Then Jesus heard and marveled and said to those who followed him, Surely I say unto you, I have not found such great of faith even in Israel. And Jesus stands there and the centurion says, Jesus, it's just by your word. If you say be healed, I know that my servant will be healed. And Jesus, the centurion said, I too am a man under authority. I know what it is to be under authority. And I want you to know, child of God, this afternoon, that you too are a man under authority. You have the authority of the Word of God inside of your mouth. So you can tell the devil, go, and he will go. And you can tell God, bring your Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will come. You too are a man under authority. Under the authority given to you, by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Remember your battle today may be more about what is unseen than what you are seeing standing before you. Stand in your God-given authority and resist the enemy. This afternoon, I want to say these words a few times. Stand strong. Stand strong. God loves you and God is fighting for you. God is with you in the storm. You are not alone. We don't have to walk in fear for we belong to Christ. And the enemy will not have the final word over your situation in the mighty name of Jesus. We are secure in God's hand and he tells us to stand firm. Whether in this life or in death, may we always be found standing firm in Jesus Christ. When it seems to be, when, when we seem to be in a place of lack, and when we seem to be in a place where the tide of blessing has turned and it has reverted back, may we have good, we may have good days and we may have some days that are not so good. Amen. I think that's what it is to be human. Who can say I've never had a good day? And who can say I've never had a bad day? We've all had good days and we've all had bad days. But take heart and don't be downhearted for the same Lord who brought you through when the tide was high is the same God that is going to bring you through when the tide seems low. When blessings come and blessings go, we still stand firm. In Psalm 103 and verse 2, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Remember his faithfulness and his eternal promise to you. God has made an eternal promise, an eternal vow to you. He wants you to, beloved, I wish above all things, that you would prosper and that you would be in health is one of the promises of God. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. In good times, Job praised God. And through tough times, we see this in Job chapter 1 and verse 21. Job chapter 1, verse 21. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. <laughs> The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And when he's giving and when he's taking away, does that change my praise barometer? Is I only, do I only praise when things are good and then I stop praising when things are bad? No. It is, I think your praise barometer, if anything, should go up in the times of difficulties because as you call on the Lord, he will be near. 
Does this mean that I embrace hardships? Does this mean that, oh, that I'm calling hardships and sorrows my best friend and disappointments my best friend? Absolutely, certainly not. For I know that even though I may go through hard times, even though I may walk through valleys of despair, my mighty God is with me and he will open up a door of hope and he will open up doors of hope for you. I embrace his goodness and I know he will turn things around. Say, God is turning things around for me. God is turning things around for me. Hallelujah. I embrace every eternal promise that he has placed in his word for me. And I know that through my God, I will gain victory. He is turning things around. The same tide that came up and went back, it's coming back again. God is going to do a new thing. God is going to pour out his spirit upon his sons and his daughters in these latter days, more than the days that have gone. And as the waves of the spirit are moving upon the face of the waters of the earth, my friend, God is going to have victory in your life it is time to be happy (laughs) but Lorna there's so many bad things happening it's time to be happy like never before Psalms 144 verse 15 happy is the people that is in such a case ye happy is the people whose God is the Lord Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. For God is my hope. Hallelujah. God sets in place the things of blessing for you. I decree and declare in the mighty name of Jesus that, hallelujah, in the mighty name of Jesus, that the night time that you are facing will not last. The tide is turning into blessing right now. Favor is coming down upon your life like never before. If you will stretch out in faith and believe it completely, God is causing you to grow stronger in every area of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, walk closer to Him than you've ever walked before. I say out loud over your life this afternoon, the atmosphere is changing. The atmosphere of faith is intensifying in your life right now. Faith for increase. Faith for is resting upon you. Faith is resting upon you right now for the supernatural. A supernatural faith of God for greater things. And I see them coming to pass over your life without delays from the enemy, without delays from the pit of hell. Hallelujah. God is fighting for you. It is time to stand strong. God is fighting for you today. He is dispatching angels from the heavenly realms of heaven into your life. Hallelujah. They are fighting through the heavenly realms. They are cutting down the forces of darkness as the prayers of the saints ascend into the heavens. It is not time to break forth the battle and be defeated by speaking negative words. It is time to stand firm like never before. The heavenly realms are fighting for you. Jesus is your advocate. He is the one that is making your case before God. He is the advocate that sits at the right hand of the Father. He is making intercessions for you. He is singing songs of deliverance over you. He is causing the tide to turn around for you. The Lord fights for you this afternoon. And according to Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 4, the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against the enemy and to give you victory in the mighty name of Jesus. According to Romans chapter 8 and verse 31, what then shall we say to these things? For if God is for us, Who can be against us? Nothing will separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. 
Joshua chapter 1 and verse 9. Have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous? Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord your God is with you. And I'm here to tell you this afternoon, do not be discouraged. Be not discouraged. Be strong and be very courageous. The battle that you're facing is temporary. It is a lie from the pits of hell and God is turning things around. In Psalm 44 and verse 5, though you will through you, we will push back our adversities. Through you, God, we will push back our adversaries. Through your name, we will trample down those who rise up against us. Deuteronomy 3 and verse 22. Do not be afraid of them, for the Lord himself will fight for you. Do not be afraid of what you are facing. The Lord himself is fighting with you this afternoon. In Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. Yet... Those who wait for the Lord will gain a new strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and they will not get tired. They will walk and they will not faint. It is time for you to rise up with wings as eagles. It is time for you to run, saints. It is time for you to run. It is time for freedom. It is time to see those chains that have held you back be broken in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Joshua 23 and verse 10. I pray you're writing these scriptures down. That they will find a place as you declare them out loud. And you take the wings of the morning tomorrow morning. And you shake the wicked right out of your day. And you cause the mighty hand of God to breathe life into your day. To breathe life into your finances. To breathe life into your health. And every crevice and every part of your life to be filled with power and the presence of God. Josh 23 verse 10. One of your men puts a, thousand, puts a thousand to flight. For the Lord your God is he who fights for you just as he promised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus gives us victory. Jesus has given us victory over sin. You might be saying this afternoon, you know what, I've backslidden too far and I'm too far gone and Jesus doesn't even want me. But do you know what? Jesus died on the cruel cross for you. He came to save the sinners. He came to set the captives free. He came to heal the brokenhearted. It is time to stand up and stand your ground and say, Jesus, I need you now more than ever. Come stand with me in the battle. In the powerful name of Jesus, hallelujah. The enemy has no more control over you if you will accept Jesus as Lord of your life. We know that we do not fight alone. God is constantly at work on your behalf. He is interceding at the right hand of the Father. God is shielding you, strengthening you, protecting you. He is exposing and destroying and tearing down the works of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would pour out wisdom, pour out discernment to recognize the schemes of the enemy, that we would stand strong, we would stand in the authority, the God-given authority that is given to us. And just like the centurion said, that I too am a man under authority. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we speak out the authority of your word. We ask for your comfort for those who are weak and facing tragic loss and devastation and sickness at this time. God, we ask for your peace. We ask for your protection. We trust you constantly. Work on, your beha work on the behalf of your children, even this afternoon, we pray. Father God, we ask that you would bring justice for those who have been wronged, those who have been maybe kicked out of their houses and things un that are unethical. Turn things around 
and expose the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against the persecuted church around the world. And Father God, we ask that you, you would protect them. We ask that you would bring to light what needs to be brought to light. Father God, we ask that your truth will be exposed in every area, even in our country and in our land. Father God, we thank you that you are making a way where there seems to be no way. Father God, I thank you that you are tearing down the forces of darkness on our behalf as we would stand firm in the liberty with which Christ has made us free. Father God, I come before you this afternoon and I pray with anybody that is needing to accept Jesus into their life that they would pray along with me this afternoon. Father God, I know that I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. I know that I have I have wronged you. I have sinned. And Father God, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. Father God, I ask you to come into my life and the things that I've done, I I want to repent. I don't want to do the sinful things I've do, been doing anymore. I want to turn 180 degrees in the other direction. And I choose to follow you today, Lord Jesus. Father God, I pray that you would forgive me and that you would write my name in the Lamb's book of life. Father God, thank you that you remove sin from me as far as the east is from the west. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, anybody who is sick that sickness is going now in the name of Jesus with the nerve system anything that is blocked in the way blockages to be unblocked in the name of Jesus Lord God even uh, arteries and, and cholesterol things that are stopping Lord I pray that the platelets and those blood issues are coming into line saturation levels and oxygen levels to normalize now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for strength and healing and power for your children. Lord God, I thank you that you stand with us and you're turning the tide. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are giving people jobs who are needing jobs. Let them succeed and prosper in what they put their hands to. Give them energy to wake up tomorrow morning and see the new day as you turn the tide in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's kings and priests gave a loud amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. And I just pray that if this ministry has resonated with you this afternoon, that you would consider uh, sowing a financial seed into this ministry. And I just want to encourage you in Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, it says, I will restore, Joel chapter 2 verse 25 and I will restore to you that the swarming locust has eaten and the crawling locust and the consuming locust and the chewing locust and the great army which I sent among you. Hallelujah. God is turning things around and I believe that God is going to destroy those locusts, the chewing locusts, the, the consuming locusts. You may, you may have looked on the crop of your life and said, oh, so many things have been destroyed and broken by the enemy, but God is going to just, you're going to see things turn around and I believe as you sow a financial seed into this ministry that the Lord is going to increase you more and more, you and your children in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now therefore says the Lord, turn to me with all your hearts, with fasting and weeping and mourning and rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in kindness. And as we lift our hands up high, we say out loud that Jesus Christ is Lord. Bless you this afternoon. He's my Lord and I love him so. One day he came down from heaven and he walked this world just like you and me He healed the broken hearted And he set the captives free Oh, the lame could walk And the blinded eyes could see And they 
beat him in his face, placed a crown of thorns upon 